welcome to SVG TV News of Thursday, August 11, 2022. I am Yvette Boins with the details. 27 houses at Orange Hill will be officially handed over by the end of August. The rehoming program is part of government's recovery efforts following the eruption of Lasso Freire volcano last year. According to North Windward Area Representative and Acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel, Two homes are already occupied by families who are living close to the Overland area and a third family is scheduled to be relocated next week. We have to get the individual's name to ensure that the names are established in terms of the services that would be required in terms of electricity and, and, and water and so on. We have to make sure that their names are established within the normal scheme of things yes. so that the electricity bills would be paid to the will be, will be sent to these individuals to be paid by them and so on because it's their it's their building it's their property so all of that work has to be done preliminary before they get into get into the, those buildings and um that individual will, all of that will be done of, as of this week and, and that this week, this weekend, of course, that individual will be, will be housed in one of those 27 houses. The minister notes the remaining 24 houses will be decided through a lottery style system where persons come in and pick a number. He further adds that next week prospective homeowners will be invited to make their selection and utilities will be arranged so that they can move into their new homes. We are creating a lottery system where you come in and you select, you pick, you pick a number. Okay. And so... Corresponds to the number, folks? Yeah, you, you, that, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah. What happened is that, of course, there are two bedrooms and there are three bedroom houses. And according to the data, of course, those are, there are persons who have been living in one bedroom and two bedroom and so on that you are allocated in this case, there were no one-bedroom house built there. So even though you had a one-bedroom house, mm -hmm. you may end up, with, you will end up with a two-bedroom house. So we are hoping that as of next week, that the individuals will be called in, and that, that they would do their their, their their pulling from the hats to get their number, mm -hmm. and 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 um, to be able to identify their house with their name and to have again that kind of preliminary work done before they go into that house. Minister Daniel gives the assurance that by the time the residents are ready to relocate all the necessary amenities will be in place. At the moment equally we are to Brax to Braxa the roads within that subdivision is being done and we are hoping that by the end of this month as well, all of the roads will be completed to facilitate the individuals going back or going into those houses so that when you go into that subdiv subdivision, it is all well and dandy. We are hoping as well that Vinlek will put in all of the street lights to accommodate the persons going in and so we want to make it that the settlement is when you go in that all of the necessary facilities are there um, the Ministry of Agriculture through, it, through the forestry department has been asked to go in and plant up you know, um, some trees and so on um, to do what is required in terms of the putting in the gardens that are, are, are required there. And so I'm hoping that all of that will be completed by within the next two weeks. Acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel disclosed that government Senator Julian Francis returned home after seeking medical attention in Barbados. 
Senator Francis arrived in SVG on Tuesday after suffering a stroke on July 24th and being airlifted to Barbados for treatment. Speaking on NBC Radio on Wednesday, Daniel welcomed the senator back home and wished him a speedy recovery. Let me also take this opportunity to express love and appreciation to our dear beloved Julian Francis, who, as you know, fell sick mm -hmm. and was out of state. But information has come that he is back in state. He came in yesterday afternoon and we welcome him back to St. Vincent. We wish to ask that his health be restored as soon as possible. And uh, we just want to express our love and appreciation to him for the good work he has been doing for this country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Members of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union staged picket action in Kingston this morning calling for dismissed teachers to be reinstated with full benefits. The action comes on the heels of an announcement made by government stating that teachers who were dismissed from service for refusing to comply with government's COVID-19 vaccine mandate can reapply. If re-employed, the unvaccinated will be subject to a number of recommendations, including mandatory weekly testing and will be employed on a contract basis. Union members gathered in front of the vegetable market chanting, reinstate, no wait. President of the SVGTU, Oswald Robinson, says the union will intensify the action leading up to the start of the new school term. He re-emphasizes the call for government to repeal the vaccine mandate and allow teachers to return to the classroom. The government has enacted a piece of law mandating all workers to be vaccinated and we are asking the state, the government, to reconsider this decision, repeal the law, give back the workers their job. We have too many of our qualified, experienced teachers out of the classroom as a result of this mandate. Reinstate the teachers, you have to repeal the law, compensation for damages and all the other benefits that the workers are supposed to achieve. So we want the parents to take note that your children is another target by the state and we want you to make sure that you are boarded us because we want quality, quality experienced teachers in the classroom. Robinson adds the dismissal of qualified teachers has created a crisis situation in the education system and the country. The children in the classroom need quality teachers and the government has fired the, most of the quality teachers. In the secondary school system, there are teachers who are specialized in teaching certain subject areas and a number of schools were short of these teachers. This has an implication also for matriculation purposes for children who have to enter um, post-secondary education if you don't have the subject areas you may not be able to um, achieve it's depriving you so it is really a crisis in governance of the country it is also a crisis in the rest of the society you have increased unemployment you have also increased the levels of poverty so it is a crisis and when I said that there was a crisis in April a year ago there were people who thought I was not speaking as being sober but this is the reality oil prices are escalating and this has started even before the war in Ukraine you see so when you take people off the bread line you are creating greater hardship for not only the workers but the dependencies of these workers the public service union has expressed concern about an incident where an employee from the milton Cato memorial hospital was allegedly strip searched by police the details of the incident were revealed at a press conference this week in relation to the situation which occurred on june 14th this year the employee filed a complaint with the representative trade union body and according to the grievance officer with the PSU, Nanton Davis, 
the hospital employee who was on her menstrual cycle at the time was searched by members of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force without being informed as to the reasons for the search. Who proceeded to take her into a room, a female police officer. She bared gloves and she asked the attendant to remove her garments. Now she's there, she's wondering why, as she said, why do I have to remove my clothes? The officer told her to just do what was said. She took off her clothes. During that, she informed the officer that she was on her monthly her menstrual cycle. And the officer told her that she will have to strip right down to her underwear and to be asked to strip right down to your undies and to inform the officer that I am on my monthly, you will think that some courtesy would have been extended to her. She was told she has to take off everything, which she made a mess because it was a heavy flow. Sorry to be so graphic, but I have to relate it. Uh, a search was carried out, a warrantless search, because she volunteered, because she had nothing to hide, as the sister said, and nothing was found. She was told to put back on her garments, of which she proceeded, and her hair was up in one, and the officer attempted to take out the bond that was there, and a whole body search was done. Nothing was found on her. Davis says the employee is calling for an apology from the police and the staff at the hospital. What our member is seeking is just an apology. An apology from the um, her supervisors or the persons who would have in, called her name involved her in this incident. And it has not been forthcoming. She has Return to work, but as she noted, it's not the same as before. She's uncomfortable because the, the synergy has been lost and the family that she thought she had down there, the camaraderie, it has been lost. And uh, she's just asking for uh, an apology, which it seems as if it's not forthcoming. General Secretary of the New Democratic Party, Brenton Smith, is calling on the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Cuthbert Knights, to resign. Smith, who was speaking on radio, made the call following the release of a memo which stated that all healthcare workers will be required to receive COVID-19 boosters at five-month intervals. At a recent press conference, senior government officials admitted the memo was sent out in error. Senior public servant, which includes permanent secretaries, who are the gatekeepers of the law, the gatekeepers of true governance and how things are to be run in the administration, are now finding themselves themselves uh, being involved politically and making themselves basically like stooge. And that is unfortunate. For gatekeepers of the law, you should really be looking out for the interests of all of your workers and all of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But instead, we are seeing their particular interest is for that of a political party. And in the end, it turns out that they will be thrown under the bus because they don't want to be professional. And, and that is very unfortunate. But I want, to go, I, I want to go a bit further. I think the permanent secretary should resign because you cannot tell me that your signature is on, on this document. And now it has been said that basically I don't know anything. The government don't know anything about this document, but yet there are signatures inside of it. Smith urges public servants to stand in solidarity with the unions. We have to be very serious in this country, the working class. You know, you have to be able to support your unions and rise up against an administration who doesn't care anything about you. You know, you, you have to be able to speak out and come to this faithfulness that we all have and deal with the issues that confront you and your children. Because it is no doubt, when, when forces are united, you get more things done. Now is the greatest of opportune time for persons to stick and stand by their unions. If you have never done it before, forget about the politics. Forget about who you supported or who you are supporting now. 
Stick by your unions and your associations because this is what's going to benefit you at the end of the day. You can't always be thinking about your government and your government is not thinking about you. And this is a time in which your family need to come together and understand what you are facing and support the unions. Police have launched an investigation into the shooting incident which occurred at Arnosville. The incident has resulted in the death of Gerard Deroche, a resident of French's, and has left three persons injured. Preliminary investigations reveal that around 2 a.m. on August 11th, patrons were attending a karaoke event at Trotman's Depot in Annesville when an unknown gunman approached a group of persons and opened fire. Daroche, Alicia Wilson of Yambu, Rashida Parsons of Redemption Sharps, and Tiffany Durant of Richmond Hill all received gunshots during the incident and were taken to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital for medical attention. Dershe was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. The motive surrounding the shooting incident is unknown at the moment. A post-mortem examination is expected to be carried out on Dershe's body to ascertain the exact cause of death. Investigations in the matter are ongoing. Dershe's death marks the 26th homicide reported for 2022. Kaliakwa fishermen are facing numerous challenges at the top of the list is the reopening of the fish market. This is according to the president of the National Fisherfolk Corporation, Winsbert Harry. Harry tells SVG TV that Kaliakwa fishermen are dissatisfied, noting the fish market has been closed over a year, leaving the fishermen to sell their fish on the trees. For over since 20... 21, the Calico Fisher Market was closed for do some repairing work and constructions and the fish market. And up to this day, the fisher folks in Calico are still complaining about that. The fish market is still closed. There is no access towards the fish market, towards the fisher folks. They have no way to put up the fish. They have no way when they come from off a sea that they could have a proper bath, no, no toilet, nothing that they could use when they come from off a sea. Harry is pleading with the government and relevant authorities to address this situation. To the authorities, even to the, the ministry, if they could come to the assistance in terms of assisting the fisher folks in, in Calico because the fisher folks in Calico really need a place where they could store the fish because it's over a year and four months now that the, King, the Calico fish market has been closed and it's very hard to see when the fisher folks come from half a sea. They have to hang up a, a scale and a tree and start to sell the fish from under a tree. And here we have a market that is closed almost a year and three months. And I think that is need, it is an urgent need for the reopening of the Calico fish market to the fisher folks of Calico because that used to be one of the most um, vibrant uh, market where persons who go in on the windward side of the island instead of they coming to Kingston they could buy the fish from the um, buy the fish and the way back out so I think there is a need for the assistance to assist the Calico fisher folks in terms of getting that market so they could sell the fish and operate at a good hygiene because I do not think that the way how they are operating or the way how fish is being sold in Calico right now to the general public is into the best way.